Hi, welcome to learnhowtogarden.com and in today's episode we are going to be talking about how to deal with Christmas presents. Uh, I mean I'm sure a lot of you have had flowers for Christmas. Um, I suspect the sort of two commonest tend to be poinsettias or these orchids. A lot of us get orchids for Christmas and I'm going to talk you through how to care for these orchids and how to get them to reflower because they really are quite easy to keep flowering and they are the most exquisite thing to have in your house. If you don't already subscribe to us on learnhowtogarden.com there is a link below this video if you just hop over there all it'll cost is your email address and that means we can keep you in touch every time we post a new film. As a gardener one of the commonest things I tend to be given by friends of mine are plants, flowers, uh, shrubs and one of the things I've been given for a long time at Christmas tend to be these now these are Phalaenopsis orchids this is two separate uh, plants and Phalaenopsis means moth like if we focus in onto one of these blooms you can see they do have a moth like shape it comes from the Greek word meaning moth like and although they're an orchid they're quite easy to grow you can get them to flower about three times a year and the flowers can last for months on end so you can get them really nearly to flower continuously which is uh, brilliant and they can last up to 10 years you know seven's sort of about average but I have had them go in 10 years and as long as you follow one or two really simple rules they're much much easier than we think orchids tend to have a real sort of fear factor about them and some of the warm orchids the, the, the orchids that come from the tropics can be fiddly but these are a cool orchid these grow in cool conditions um, and are much much easier to care for the first thing you have to realize about orchids is they don't like huge changes in temperature the minimum temperature to keep a Phalaenopsis alive is about 58 degrees if you can keep it above 60 degrees it's much much happier and in the wild and I've seen these growing in northern Australia they grow in the shade so an east facing window west facing window uh, if you've got nets you know sort of they used to grow brilliantly for my gran who had net curtains because it keeps the shade out they sort of you only want to be giving them about keeps the shade out keeps the sun out uh, I don't know if I've obviously had too much sun although goodness knows where in England at the minute it's been pouring for the last month um, they want about 70 percent sort of shade really they're not in the dark but certainly not direct sunlight this one I suspect you know if you get direct sunlight or you overfeed them that what will happen is these leaves will start to go yellow they'll go droopy and fall off and you'll kill the plant so that's the first thing you've got to keep the sort of temperature roughly even bathrooms are normally quite good for this um, or conservatories as long as you don't put them right next to a window if they're right next to a window and you do get a frost outside that cold can seep in and again quite easily damage your orchid the next thing to think about or to look at is the fact that it's come in a clear pot now there's clear um, evidence there's clear sort of knowledge that shows you that orchids grow much much better in these clear pots in the wild again they're epiphytic they're growing on something sort of rather than in soil like a lot of our uh, plants that we're used to and the light around their roots is what they're used to and when you see these big fleshy roots growing out of the pot don't be alarmed by that that means they're quite happy they're quite healthy don't try to cram all these into the pot itself over potting an orchid trying to get it into a bigger pot again is quite a common cause of them dying they like to feel constricted they like to feel they're sort of you know they're held in there quite tightly the next thing you want to consider is watering it's really really important to use rainwater that's tepid at room temperature cold rainwater out of your water butt or water out of your normal tap again will in some cases kill the actual orchid uh, cold water cold water on these big fleshy roots quite easily will sort of get it to rot off very very quickly so tepid water get some water put it in a milk bottle just leave it on the kitchen side overnight uh, is the easiest thing and do you want to be watering them um, I normally in the summer water them about every four to five days less in the winter you want to keep the growing medium just moist and a trick I was shown is uh, if you've got a lollipop stick an old lolly stick if you push it just gently in here take it out if it feels wet 
there's still enough moisture in there. Um, and every period of time you can sort of feel the weight of them. You want them quite light. This compost, um, we call it compost, the growing media here, is normally made up of a third really rough bark, a third charcoal and a third per perlite. And very, very free draining, but it will hold some moisture in there. For most of us, if you're going to repot your orchid, the best thing to do is just to buy a small bag of that from your local nursery. But like I say, don't be that quick to overpot it. It doesn't need it. The next bit you need to think about is, at some point, you're going to want to take these flowers off. As these flowers die back and fade, when you get to about one or two, you'll notice that it's starting to die back along here. At that point, what you need to do is look down the stem for the first sort of join. If I put my hand here, you can probably focus right in on here and you can probably see just there, if I turn it to the side, a tiny spur. And you want to cut about a centimetre above that at about 45 degrees. That's where you're going to get another flowering stalk come from. If it's died back past that, take the stalk out right at the bottom and another flowering stalk will emerge from the bottom and grow up and out. So you could either take these flowers off when they were like this and put them in water, but I tend to wait until I've probably got one or two just hanging on at the end and then take it back to there. So leave it alone and it will quite happily start to come back. It likes moisture, but it doesn't like to sit in it. So again, another thing that I tend to do is to get some pebbles, put them in a saucer, waterproof saucer, otherwise you'll find that uh, whatever it's sitting on, if it's a wooden side, it'll soak through. A waterproof saucer, some pe pebbles in the saucer, some water around those pebbles, and then sit your orchid on top. That increases the humidity around the leaves but you don't want it sitting in the water. It doesn't want to be wet. It's all about creating humidity rather than giving it a lot of water. So that's Phalaenopsis orchid. I'm sure a lot of you have got them. Uh, I think they're beautiful. They're very, very simple flowers really to look at. Um, they're very, very easy to live with. Um, the other little thing I like on this is that we used to tie these in to hold them up because in the native state they tend to be sort of coming out sideways a lot of the time from sort of a crook in two branches they sit there. These are just little hair crips, those little things that you see in packets that little girls put all over their head. They're brilliant, they just quite happily hold it without crushing it onto this stick. I hope that's given you the sort of basics on how to keep these very, very beautiful, but supremely simple plants alive. And they will give you years and years of um, beauty sitting in the middle of your dinner table, sitting in your conservatory. I always used to have one on my desk when I unfortunately drove a desk for a living many, many years ago. And uh, it used to remind me that what I should be doing was being outside with plants. Thank goodness I listened finally to myself and gave up driving the desk. So that's Mark at Learn How to Garden saying, thanks a lot. I'll be covering euphorbias, or not euphorbias, poinsettias. It is actually a euphorbia AC, which is why I say uh, euphorbias. And, and how to look after poinsettias and get them to reflower. Although it's not actually a flower, it's the leaves themselves changing colour. So that's Mark at Learn How to Garden saying thanks a lot. Until next time, bye for now.